Today's procedure coding case study focuses on how to code the intermedullary nailing of a hip fracture using ICD-10 PCS. I will take you through an operative report and then break down the procedure step by step to build the ICD-10 PCS code. My name is Claire and I'm an inpatient coding auditor. In my coding tips and tricks videos, you'll discover valuable insights to help sharpen your medical coding skills and code with confidence. If that sounds like something that would be helpful to you, please consider hitting that subscribe button so that you can be notified whenever I release new content. When reviewing an operative report for PCS code assignment, the best place to start is by reviewing the title of the report and the indication for the procedure. This will help you to understand why the procedure is being done. By figuring out the purpose or the objective of the procedure, you can start to get an idea of what the root operation might be. In this case, the title of the procedure is intramedullary nailing, which in some cases would be root operation insertion. However, since the diagnosis identifies the fracture as displaced, it's pretty likely that the root operation will be reposition as the bone is out of place and needs to be moved back into normal position. Of course, we shouldn't rely solely on the title of the op report, so we'll need to read the whole report to confirm this. Let's start building our code. First, we need to determine which section we will be working in. The section is the broad procedure category where the code is found. In this case, we are coding a surgical procedure, so we will select the medical and surgical section. Next, we have enough information in the title of our report to select our body system. The title tells us that this procedure was performed on the left hip, which is a lower bone. We will confirm this in the body of the op report as well. Now let's begin by reviewing the op report to build our code. Instead of reading it word for word, I will focus on the areas that provide us with the necessary, necessary details to develop our code. The patient was brought to the operating room and prepared for the procedure. The surgeon then rotated the hip externally, applied longitudinal traction, and followed it with internal rotation to achieve the appropriate reduction. C-arm fluoroscopy was used to check the alignment of the fracture. This confirms that our root operation selection will be repositioned because the physician performed a reduction of the fracture, manipulating it back into normal location, meeting the definition of root operation reposition, which is defined as moving to its normal location or other suitable location, all or a portion of a body part. Next, the hip was prepared for incision. The incision was made at the tip of the greater trochanter. A pin was then placed, followed by the placement of a guide over the pin. An opening was drilled in the greater trochanter to accommodate the nail. This identifies the portion of the femur being operated on is the greater trochanter which is the upper portion of the femur. Looking back to the diagnosis, we can confirm that this was the left hip and select our body part as left upper femur. Now let's determine the approach for this procedure. The surgeon utilized a stab incision, which is a very small incision, followed by the placement of a pin using imaging to ensure its correct positioning. Subsequently, a pin and a guide wire were inserted to reach the procedure site. Finally, the nail was inserted using an insertion device. This meets the definition of percutaneous approach, which is defined as entry by puncture or minor incision of instrumentation through the skin or mucous membrane and any other body layers necessary to reach the site of the procedure. It's important to understand that with a percutaneous approach, the surgeon cannot directly visualize the procedure site, in this case being the greater trochanter bone. The use of guide wires and imaging is an indication that the incision was not large enough to expose and visualize the greater trochanter, confirming the percutaneous approach. Now for the device selection. The title of the operative report tells us that an intermedullary nail was used. This was further confirmed in the description of the procedure, which indicated the placement of a trochanteric fixation nail into the canal. If you're not sure about the device, you can always check the PCS device key table to see if it's included. If it's not there, you can research the device on the internet. 
In, in this case, we can see that the intermedullary nail is listed in the device table, and it confirms that the correct device selection for an intermedullary nail is internal fixation device intermedullary. The final character in our PCS code selection is selection of the qualifier character. We will choose the no qualifier option. And now we have our final PCS code, 0QS, 736Z, reposition left upper femur with intermedullary internal fixation device percutaneous approach. So that's it for today's procedure coding case study. I really hope that this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. And if there's any procedures that you would like me to cover in the future, just leave a comment below and I'll add them to my list. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy coding.